From the Rialto, a street called the Merceria leads to St. Mark's. This is the tourist's main drag, with human traffic jams and a gauntlet of shopping temptations. Many tourists, as if in a knick-knack induced trance, never get beyond this one glitzy street. If this is all you experience, as it is for so many, Venice can be more exhausting than enjoyable. But savvy travelers leave the center and explore. Walk and walk to the far reaches of town. Don't worry about getting lost. Keep reminding yourself, I'm on an island and I can't get off. Worst case scenario, you run out of island and you could enjoy a drink while studying your map. By the way, you can pop into a business anywhere, pick up a card, they always come with a map, and a prominent, you are here. Since there are no real street names, you navigate by landmarks. Follow the directional arrows or simply ask a local. Dove, that's where is, San Marco. Dove Rialto, they'll point you in the right direction. Scusi, signore, dove campo San Giovanni e Paolo? Di là. Tutti. Grazie. Okay, grazie, ciao. Wandering, you discover a different Venice. You may stumble upon some shy grandeur. 500 years ago, a big shot with some extra cash decided to update his Gothic mansion with a Renaissance spiral staircase. Over the centuries, the haphazard community coalesced. Because nobles originally settled on their own little islands, you'll find palaces and delightful squares scattered all over. Eventually, island communities decided to join, or literally bridge, with others. Building bridges required shoring up the canals. Later, paved canal-side walks appeared. While plenty wet, Venice had no natural source of drinking water. But a thousand years ago, residents devised a clever way of using town squares as cisterns. Rainwater would flow into these stone grills and then through a sand filtering system and onto the main well. Only after it devised this safe, local source of drinking water was Venice's population able to grow. 